Yo, Composing Gloves here, and today we're going to be doing sound design with FM8. So, this is a follow-up series. This is also consequently the first one. I always make the sub bass the first one, or at least I try to. Uh, this is a series on making patches with FM8. So we're not going to talk about what stuff does, or we're not going to talk about basic synthesis or digital audio synthesis or any of that jazz. That's all stuff that I have entire series for. So just go watch that stuff if you want to know about that stuff. This stuff is about patch creation. So if I'm moving pretty fast, that's because I'm not going to waste my time talking about things that I don't think are relevant. I might bring up stuff as it appears to be relevant or I feel like I should talk to it. But if it becomes a subject that I start losing myself on, then I'm going to ditch it and just say, go watch that series and move on with my life and complete the video. So that's why those other series exist. So the first one here is we have a sub bass and I added a higher tone to it, as you can hear. And it sounds like this. And as it plays the first round through, I'm going to add in Contact, which has Cuba loaded up from the Salsa thing. And they've got a bunch of pretty cool percussive stuff. And I just went with the basic loops and added them on in. And so I'm going to add those in because this is a common thing sub bass is used for is things like Bossa Nova or Salsa and things like that. I've been listening to a lot of it on the, on the radio. And I feel like Bossa Nova is like latino deep house sort of in a, in a way maybe not maybe you disagree with me but anyways here we go here it is so that's the line and if i get rid of that upper tone that's it now if you don't have good speakers you might not be able to hear that so you, you want to get something that you can reproduce sub bass with really low tones now i'm going to add in contact right here Yes, I love it. So you can see we get something kind of kind of grooving, sort of a fun a fun thing. So a sub bass is something that FM8, Citrus, any any single oscillator plugin will excel at if you can control it down to the oscillator level. The only one, like for example, you might be saying, can't all all plugins do that? The answer is no. Ironically, Harmer cannot do that. But there are ways to get the sub bass that I talk about there that are also pretty darn simple, but these are just these are just exceptionally easy. So I decided to sort of bring out a stylistic move with a sub bass this time around. So, okay, what's going on here? Well, I've got F, and F is going out, and it's just a sine wave. I left it right where it was at, and I moved the envelope a little bit to get rid of that uh, clickiness from the attack and the release. They do that, that's just their default way. It's the way things... I mean, like, if I were to build one, I would probably put a small slope on it by default, but they didn't do that. So, on their default sound, it has the clickiness, so you got to get rid of that with the envelope. Uh, so, it's just a choice they made. It's whatever. I, I don't really have an opinion about it. So, that's really cool. That's really cool. That's really all there is to it. And then, I went ahead and cloned it up an octave to give it just an upper tone. Now, this stuff I would bring down lower just as the function of a sub bass. And this stuff is like, yeah, I don't know. I like that. I like it just by the bass by itself. Earlier I had settled on it a higher tone. I don't know why. I just liked it more. You could come through here, select some different things, but for the sub bass, it's generally just a sine wave, just a sub tone. The purpose is to fill out the bottom end. Now with sub bass, sub bass is a headroom eater. If you have a lot of stuff going on, maybe you've got your super dope dank drums or whatever going on and maybe like a drum and bass track or something and you throw your sub bass in because you want it to have that extra impact at your drop, you may be surprised to hear that half your mix goes away. Um, and that's just the problem you're going to face. So you, you got to figure out ways to sort of mix it in there. A couple different methods. One of them is to go for a stereo image. That's not a very good idea with a sub bass because the tones are so low that you'll just create a big mess. You generally want your sub bass to be mono. And then what you could do is you can either cut things out at the bottom end. So you could take the kick out or, you know, rearrange the kick so that it fits better with the sub. Or you could take the area of the sub out. You could side chain it so that it only plays when other bass elements aren't also playing. And then on the upper end stuff, you can usually deal with that. But that bottom end can really just suck 
all the room out of your mix. So you just got to be careful. So let's really quick just make one because it's a pretty simple sound. So we'll come over here. We'll do FM8. Do, 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 do. We'll paste it. We will cut this. So as of now, we have this. And you see we're almost done. Like it's already almost done for us. So if we come over here, operator F is the default one out. I'm going to turn it up to 100 just because probably I would when I mix the song later, I'd make different decisions about some of these things. But I'm just going to move the envelope over and I'm going to move it out a little bit. This may or not be enough for me. That's good. So these look like big changes, but in reality, they are not. So it's just a weird sort of a scale thing, which is something I, I really do like about FM8 is it behaves the way I mean, I expect it to behave. If you know all the technical rules, when something weird happens, like a click, that's normally you could sometimes lose that to processing and other plugins that account for more consumer mistakes. Um, and here it's all right there like if you need to get rid of the click you got to come here and get rid of the click by default i sort of wish they had a small slope on it just to do the de-clicking but it's whatever most of all the plugins i use do that they, they behave the way they're supposed to it's just i don't know fma has this type of vibe to it where i'm like oh yeah that's like i feel like i'm more technical when i use it maybe it's because the interface looks a little scarier in my opinion than other like their envelopes just looks scary. Like this looks like a scary envelope to use. It's it's not in any way like less efficient or anything. It just looks scary to use. The graphics aren't as friendly. So, you know, I feel a little more advanced when I'm using FM8. It's just one of those like side effects, which I think is a good thing. I mean, uh, creative wise, I guess I could have a couple implications, but now. So ideally, we'd have some other bass down there, but uh, you'd be surprised in a lot of um, tracks, Latino tracks, Bossa Nova, I guess I shouldn't call them Latino Hispanic. I don't even know. Those those types of genres, salsa, they'll have stuff down there in that low end, and it could be just a sub. Like that's a that's a stylistic thing I've noticed a lot. Though, But most of the time, they'll also have like a, a bass or something down there too, like an actual acoustic bass. So it just depends, especially on what sort of era you're listening to. Older eras obviously don't have like sub basses hanging around, but the newer stuff is very similar to dance, dance music, sort of like deep house, trance, dance. They usually have some sort of a girl come on and sing some magical words in Spanish. And I'm like, oh man, this is really, really chill. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Pose the gloves here. This is the first video in how to make a song in FL Studios 12. Uh, assumably your first song. You have perhaps you just downloaded the demo or gone about some other means of obtaining FL, hopefully by purchasing it. Um, and you are now looking to create some sort of song.